to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. Looking forward to another video on building confidence or confidence in God. Now this will be the last one and it might not be super long. I just really want to get some of these amazing translations and scriptures to you so that you can just feed on them. As you know, and, and, and you can see I'm in a hotel room here. Uh, it's later at night, so I'm not talking real, real loud. And uh, we're in uh, Danbury, Connecticut, just finished nine meetings. Aaron actually helped me in three of those morning meetings, which was like amazing help. She did a great job. And, uh, and now tomorrow um, I'll be in Wallingford, uh, Connecticut uh, with Pastor James Lillis. And then I'll be heading home and I'll have the weekend home before uh, the Healing Center next week. Okay, so uh, we do Adventures in Grace. And those of you that, that watch, you of course know what I'm getting ready to do. Number one, we really wanna open the heart and the mind to the, to the validity that God is real. Now, we know he is. I mean, we, we, we trust that he is, but we can actually make contact with him and have something that's more tangible than not tangible. And this is what we really want. It's always supposed to be that way. Jesus had a tangible relationship with his father. Adam had a tangible relationship with God. And this is how we're supposed to walk with him. Number two, faith becomes more normal, not scripted, but it becomes interaction and fellowship and a response to God when you're talking with him, when you're walking with him. Uh, it's, it's not just trying to build scriptures in your heart when you don't know the one who actually told you those scriptures. Obviously, faith rises, it awakens as we listen to God speak. He speaks through the written word of God. He speaks through his own voice to our ears. He speaks through many different avenues, of course. We want to listen to God. The more real he is, the easier it is to listen. And number three, of course, our testimonies. Man, we've had a really wonderful time here. Uh, all kinds of people being touched. I remember this one lady just said all the things in her mind and all the soulish pains and uh, struggles that she's had for years. When we touched her, immediately they all just left. She said it was like her mind was blown. Everything came out. God touched her. That's called the anointing that heals the brokenhearted. God wants to heal us that way. I know it can take years and years of therapy and all the studying that we do to try to get enough word in us to renew our minds. And I realize it doesn't have to take that long. But in an instant, the anointing can destroy that yoke. Praise the Lord. And that's what we're after. We want to see God just touch people. And we want to walk in this wonderful touch of God ourselves. So here we are with some scriptures. And before we do that, you know I'm getting ready to go to Matthew chapter 11, 27 to 30 in the Message Bible. And it says, Now Jesus resumed talking, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired? worn out, burned out on religion. Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Wow, such good scriptures. What an amazing thought that we can know the Father in the same way Jesus did. And I bet you we'll walk in faith just like he did too. You can't separate them. They go together, faith and fellowship. Well, here we are uh, building confidence in him and seeing what he did for us is one of the reasons why we can be just as animated and just as committed to him because we see how committed and animated he was for us. 
So here we are asking a question, how do we become one with God? The CP translation of John 3, 3 says, I want to make it clear, Jesus said, so that no one can be a member of God's family unless he is fathered from above. Godspeed said, born over again from above. When Jesus said you must be born again, I'm telling you, we are born of the seed of God which means I had the likeness of God restored to my human spirit. Praise the Lord. I never stopped to be in a spirit, even when I was lost. But now, praise God, I am restored to the divine nature of God, a spirit just like God, so holy and so pure that God could come and live and dwell inside of me. What a tandem. Amen. God and my newly created spirit, we can conquer anything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. All things are possible to him that believes. These are tremendous thoughts. Don't let go of this. This is what gets you up in the morning, and this is what makes you raise your hands and praise God at night. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Hallelujah. Barclay translation said, His old life is gone forever. A new life has come into being. I want you to know that your old life is gone. You don't have to repeat, praise the Lord, the things and the mentalities and the thought processes of the old life. That old man is gone. The quicker you recognize you are no longer that person, the easier it will be to triumph over sin. Lombok said, A new man has been created. 2 Peter 1 4 says, By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. The New Life Trans Translation said, Through these promises you can have God's own life in you. I really like how that speaks. Through these promises you can have God's own real life in you. I've got God's own real life in me, not some other life. He didn't pull something else from somewhere else to put in me. He gave of his own self. I've been born and refathered from above, born again. I'm a new creature after the order of God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thought. Any B translation said, through these promises, you may escape the corruption with which lust has infected the world and come to share in the very being of God. Wow, how I love that, the very being of God. We can share the very being of God. Lombok says God also gave us his divine nature. Revelation translation said that we may come to share again in the very being of God. Galatians 2 and verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Nolly translation said, I have been crucified with Christ. Now it's not my old self, but Christ himself who lives in me. Not your old self, but Christ himself who lives in you. Let this draw you close in your thinking so that you can see yourself one. These thoughts right here can really work in a person's imagination to see that I'm no longer just a single being. God and I live together in this body. We are champions of all champions, flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. Crescent translation said, I died when Christ died on a cross. I do not live now but Christ lives in me. The sooner you will let yourself be over with, so it's no longer about you, but it's Christ in you, the quicker you will begin to move forward in him. Jerusalem translation said, I've been crucified with Christ, and I live now not with my old life, but with the life of Christ who lives in me, the life I now live in this body, I live in faith, faith in the Son of God who loved me and who sacrificed himself for my sake. All these are really good. Barclay translation said, I have been crucified with Christ. My old life is dead. Come on, you got to see that. It is Christ who lives in me. True, my physical life goes on, but its mainstream is faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah. Lombok translation said, Christ took me to the cross with him, and I died there with him. 
Ways translation said, yes, I share Messiah's crucifixion. I am living indeed, but it is not I that live. It is Messiah whose life is in me. I'm, I'm going to have to share that one again. Ways translation said, yes, I have shared Messiah's crucifixion. I am living indeed, but it is not I that live. It is Messiah whose life is in me. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 17. The Schoenfeld translation said, But he united himself with the Master, forms a single spirit. I am united together with the Master, and I form one single spirit. Yes, it's Christ in me, but we are one entity. That means when I move, he moves. When he moves, I move. When I speak, he speaks. In other words, he backs me up, and I back him up. We work together in this. That's why Jesus said, walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. The Living Bible says you and Christ are joined together as one person. That really sums it up right there. Ephesians 4, 23 and 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you may put on the new man which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Wade translation said, which is created after the divine pattern. We <coughs> are created after the divine pattern. Fenton's translation said, the new man, the one created God-like. This is the reason why we can do the same things that Jesus did. We are like him in every way. What did it say? The new man. Put on the new man. The one created God-like. Well, you'll like this, 1 John 4 and verse 17. As he is, so are we. When is that? Right now. As he is right now at the Father, so are we. That's why we had to get raised up. You know, Jesus is, is not just a head, and we're the, we're the headless horsemen, so to speak. No, no, no. We are the body, he is the head, and we are joined together as one single person. Excuse me, one single, one single uh, being. Crescent translation said, We are like Christ in this world. Weymouth translation said, just as he is, we also are in this world. 20th century translation said, what Christ is that we also are in this world. Jerusalem said, even in this world, we have become as he is. Philip translation said, for we realized that our life in this world is actually his life lived in us. Some of these just, just push your button. That pushes my button. For we realize that our life in this world is actually his life lived in us. Come on, we realize it. Realize it right now. Close your eyes. Let your heart just realize it, that your life in this world is really his life lived in us. His life is lived in me. His life is lived in you. Oh, don't take these things for granted. You got to let these things become real. This is where confidence is built in you when it's not about you, but it's about him. And all your strength and all your faith comes from this position in Christ. Adam's translation said, whatever he is, we also are in this world. That's good. GMB translation said, our life in this world is the same as Christ." Hayes translation said, exactly as Christ is, are we also in this world. Jesus is resurrected and glorified. That makes us one with Christ. Oh, that's so very good. Colossians 3 and verse 10. Look at what it says. CP translation said, we are made to the specifications of our creator. Our brand new person is made to the specifications of our creator. I'm not like me anymore. I'm like him. That gives me a chance in life to win. Come on, I know what I haven't done and what I haven't accomplished. But in Christ, I can do all things who strengthens me. Fenton's translation said, we are the very picture of our creator. Hallelujah. John 1.12 says, to them he gives power to become sons of God who are born of God, not of the flesh, not of the will of man, not... Um, Let's see, when it said that, I don't have it in front of me. It says, you are born of God, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, uh, nor 
uh, or of blood, not of blood. In other words, it's not about being born through the bloodline. We are born through a heavenly bloodline. And you know what that means? If your family has a history of diabetes, guess what? God's never had diabetes and Jesus defeated it so you would never have it. So take right now, diabetes one, two, three, whatever they are. I tell you what, we curse the very thought of diabetes. We come against it because in this family, we don't have it, praise the Lord. Some more translations of Colossians 3.10, Ways translation said, we are molded into the likeness of him who created us. I am molded into his likeness. Come on, think about it. We were poured into his mold. It closed down on us and out we came, a brand new divine creature made in his image and made in his likeness. And the last thought is Romans 8 and verse 19. The whole world is waiting on a manifestation or the revealing of the sons of God. This little series on confidence in him, I trust you've let it do what it was supposed to do. It's supposed to make you bigger than you can even imagine on the inside. It's supposed to give you the hope back in your life and the faith to connect with God because you see what he did for you. And now you're able to march right into the throne of God. Open up your arms and stop thinking of yourself based on you. See yourself completely in him and he in you. This work that he did is to give you the victory, to make you a conqueror. You, praise the Lord, are above and not beneath, the head and not the tail. We say these things, we preach these thoughts, but today I want you to connect with God. Let your heart reach out to him because now you know it's not about what you have or haven't done. It's about what he did for you. Right now, the grace of God is waiting for you to move Move you very quickly and very far so that you can have all that your heart desires of the presence of the Lord and see the hand of God change things in your life. I pray over you right now that your heart would open, your mind would see, your ears would listen to these words and you would feel energized and you would see yourself on top of the world. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for your grace, the work of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the precious Holy Spirit who continues to whisper in our ears how righteous, pure, and holy we are, that we might walk in this world not according to our faith, but according to your faith, not according to our works, but according to your works, not according to our righteousness, but according to your righteousness. This has been a good time on Adventures in Grace. Oh, I encourage you, go to jhmijimhockaday.com. Find our email and send us your stories. I look forward to being home next week and being able to share these wonderful thoughts with you and more so as we start a new series. God bless you guys. We'll see you again real soon on Adventures in Grace.